What's going on, you wolves out there, and welcome back to another episode of Moss. We continue Quill's journey as she sets off in search of her uncle Argus. Today, we are greeted by an unexpected guest who guides us through treacherous territory. Sit tight and enjoy the second episode of Moss. Bring that glass and your sidekick too. We're going to need them. Quill called out. Hey, Starthing, wait! Quill had never met a Starthing. In campfire stories, they often meddled in the lives of mortals. And when they appeared, mischief followed. Eastern Gate was strictly forbidden. But despite her promise, who knew in her heart that Uncle Argus needed her? Quill demanded answers. Starthing, you can't just barge in here with your riddles. Where is he? What do you know? The trouble your uncle's heading for is the kind only you and that silent giant up there can get him out of. the starving and don't forget to tuck your ears in and we're back in the world of moss guys this episode is very story driven i mean the whole game is story driven but this has a lot of dialogue in it so i'm not going to be speaking much i just want you to enjoy the story as it unfolds and also listen to the wonderful music and ambiance that surrounds quill and this star starling i think starling starling I don't know how they pronounce it. But there were deer in the back there. You can also see there was a large axe. So you could tell humanoids were once inhabiting this land as part of the lore. But clearly they are no longer present. Look at that. Your response to. So 
So this is really when the story actually begins. Before it was just uh, you know, pre-story information, you needed context for the story that was about to unfold. And the helmet that Quill is now going through. There are no enemies at this point in time. Right now we're just crossing the bayou. The huge shield acting as a wall. It's kind of cool. I like that there's a there are remnants of life before. The developers even said that there's plenty of room for that. Just on the other side is the Meyer. The starving is short for Chance your uncle's still there. There's the uncle's riding squirrel. Looks like there was a big battle. The developers said that they uh, left plenty unknown for the purposes of developing on the lore. Uh, all the missing humanoids. Also, the sanctuary that you start in. <gasps> Did you hear that? The starling seemed anxious. I've ruffled enough leaves in these parts. I can't be seen with you. I'll catch up with you later. Just don't go and die on me. It is supposed to happen. It teaches you how to heal. Thank you. It's great that they have Quill use sign language. Very unique way of communicating. Considering that she is a mouse and cannot speak English or any language for that sort other than mouse. <laughs> Look. This game does occasionally require you to stand to peer over certain things. Um, I typically play this sitting. I don't know anyone who would play it while standing. There's no need for it. However, um, this game really allows you to... See, I just stood right there. This game really allows you to... Uh, it grants you the opportunity to stand up and, and search the environment. As you can see, I, I couldn't see that fragment that scroll fragment there had I not stood. However, like I said in the first episode, I've, I've played this. It's about my fifth time through it, so I know where the majority of them are, if not all of them. But it's very important to take the time, look around, see what you can find, um, see if you can find any of those fragments. Um, there are also certain trophies that you can earn uh, for instance, one that got one that I got stuck on in particular was at this inn or at this bar um, in a village. You have to destroy every piece in the barn or barn in the bar. And for the longest time, I thought I had destroyed everything. I had to spend some time standing up, looking around, trying to find. There was a there was a vase tucked in a corner that was not clearly in view unless you actually moved yourself. So be sure to use that environment. Oh, look at that. You grab enemies, make them walk, make them move. I lucked out there that I didn't get hit while I was feeling. There is no dodge roll, although you see me essentially sidestepping. Um, that is not a dodge roll, it's something that you can do whenever you want. Um, you can only do that sidestep following an attack. So it's important to be on the lookout for the wind ups and 
other indicators that an enemy is about to attack. Very important. A whisper echoed through the trees. Fought like someone who has stolen our champion's power. <coughs> A small yet fantastical band of sprites emerged surrounding Quill. I'm Veda, root seer of the mire, and you have crossed into our domain. These things are known as sprites. She sized up Quill with a rueful gaze, then turned her attention upward. I sense you there too. I have not felt the presence of such a promising reader in some time. A youthful warrior marched forward. Rootseer, I'm prepared to honor our great champion's legacy. Rodent, give us our glass. Awfully demanding you are. Quill stepped closer. Where is my uncle? If you've hurt him... Silence! Veda thundered back. It was Argus who summoned us here, and now I see why. Young one, I'm afraid the trees hum of attack. Your uncle's been taken to the castle of your ancestors. Quill's knees buckled as Veda continued. Argus put himself at great risk calling for us. Oh, Uncle Argus. Your uncle once took a solemn oath to protect the glass of your fallen king. He is the only one left who knows where it's been hidden. The arcane have long sought to wrest that knowledge from him. And do you dare to cross into the mire with our glass? Sarfog will soon burn through this forest looking to tear you and your reader apart. Unless, of course, you find them first. Take these. Weapons made for the mighty champion who died so that your people could live. Quill felt its otherworldly power course. Nice, check out that gauntlet. Find your uncle, Twofold, before the serpent and its masters break him. The warrior fumed. Hourglass with her? Rootseer, she's minuscule. Come now, the reader has chosen its hero. We must let their story unfold. Veda replied with a frost of finality, then vanished into the shadows of the mire. And that concludes another chapter in the story of Moss. Today, we encountered a star thing and the queen sprite herself, Vader. Because she is known as the Root Seer, she is aware of the reader's presence. She permits our passage and wishes us luck. There is still plenty more story to tell, so stay tuned until next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Until next time, peace.